Welcome back to the Purple Swordfish Show. I am Alex, aka Purple Swordfish, and today we're playing some Madden Ultimate Team on Madden NFL 15 for the Xbox One. And you guys know from the intro by now that this is a Ultimate Team head to head seasons game. And I'm taking on this guy who has the Titans uniforms on. So I figured that it was going to be a team that had Marcus Mariota at quarterback because usually if you're using the Titans uniforms, you're a Titans fan. So Ended up being correct here. He's got Mariota on the team. LeGarrette Blunt. I think Roddy White's out there. It's a pretty good team. Um, really impressed by it, honestly. I think he had Vernon Davis at tight end as well. So really good team. Really hard one to contain. Um, on offense here, I was a little bit worried because, again, it is a rushing quarterback. And you guys know that I sometimes have problems with rushing quarterbacks. But nevertheless, I uh, do end up coming up with a three and out there and very fortunate to come up with that three and out so i'm thinking here you know what i got the three and out i got the ball and i also get the ball at the beginning of the second half so let's take our time get a touchdown and get up 7-0 and have that in our favor you know because we have that ball coming back to us at the second half it's always the best situation to be in but here i try to force it and i try to force it to antonio gates he saw it um, coming a mile away, so he, he comes up with the user pick. Really good play by that player. And then he goes for a bomb pass to Brandon Marshall, trying to pick on Brent Grimes and his perceived lack of height. But Brent Grimes comes up with the breakup on that pass. Anyways, he keeps moving down the field with his tight end there, and he's got a really good offensive scheme. I, I thought that he was pretty tough to stop. And uh, he found some really good holes in my cover three defense that I typically run. Right there is a good example. Found Roddy White in the open field there. Goes to, I think that was Roddy White there on a end zone pass, but a little bit out of reach. Nevertheless, doesn't really matter because LeGarrette Blunt just waltzes right in and gets a touchdown. So LeGarrette Blunt walks right in, gets seven points for him. Well, here with the extra point, they get seven points. And I am down 7-0, so it kind of negates that 3-and-out with that really awful interception that I threw. So I was a little bit disappointed, and I'm sure you guys can understand why, because I really had control of the game in my hands, and I let it slip away when I threw that interception. So just goes to show, you know, forcing passes is just never a good uh, idea, and uh, I, I really need to get myself in a better place in terms of just realizing when to just throw it away. Probably should have just thrown that one away and maybe even punted that one. But nevertheless, I'm thinking here, you know what? I got five minutes left in the first half. So let's go down the field. Let's take our time. Let's run as much clock as we can and get ourselves to a 7-7 tie at the end of the first half with the ball back in our hands. So you'll notice that I tried to vary it up a little bit here. And I thought, you know what, let's do a little bit of passing. Let's do a little bit of running. You know, we got enough time on the clock where we can do that. But it's not so much time where we have to just sit there and run all the time. But I do want to keep it balanced because when you keep it balanced, you keep these guys on their toes. And a lot of times it'll lead to better running. It'll even lead to some better passing too. So end up going into a fourth and eight situation here. I decided to go for it. And Antonio Gates comes up with a really big third down conversion there. Actually fourth down conversion, I'm sorry. And from there, everything got a little bit easier. Um, Le'Veon Bell doesn't hit that hole, but you know what? There was a hole there, so that's just bad running on my part. And then this screen pass, Le'Veon Bell kind of ekes out that first down and does get out of bounds, so it stops the clock, gives us 49 seconds to make up 21 yards. Again, keeping it balanced helped out my run game. Got a nine-yard rush there. A little bit of lag going on here. Uh, another really good rush there. Gets me to the five-yard line and puts it at first and goal. With a play-action play here, and I thought that one was going to get me in the end zone, but Antonio Gates comes up just a bit short. Uh, again, ran it with Le'Veon Bell. Thought I was going to get in the end zone. Comes up just a little bit short. So you know what that means on the one-yard line. It's going to be a Donald Penn Vulture touchdown. So... Donald Penn vultures that touchdown, gets in the end zone, knots it up at 7-7 with the extra point from George Blanda, and he's got 13 seconds left in the second quarter. So I'm thinking, guys, hey, let's just get him the ball. He'll probably kneel in the end zone, and he'll probably have 13 seconds to score a touchdown or get in field goal range. 
So he takes it out here, and I was a little bit surprised by that. So I was lucky enough where my defense made him pay a little bit for it and got him down on his own 18. And then Marcel Darius comes up with a massive uh, play here. I could not believe he came up with a pick six, but he did. And it just goes to show that that final edition Marcel Darius card was a really good investment. Spent about 90k putting that set together to get that card. But he came up really huge in this game, as you'll see. So he comes up with that pick six. And for me, that was just pretty much play of the game. And again, experiencing some lag here. So that's why you see everything kind of stuttering a little bit. So he lets that one bounce out the back of the end zone. And then here, again, I'm playing quarters, three deep, man, and I'm just trying to prevent something that could turn into a touchdown. Um, he ends up running with Mariota. Marcel Darius again with a fumble recovery. So comes up with his second big play in the first half there. Unfortunately, didn't have any time left on the clock. I was hoping I would have a second or two and uh, that I would be able to just kick a field goal real quick, but didn't work out that way. Anyways, that Marcel Darius pick six put me in such a great place. I thought, you know, I'm up by seven, and I was expecting a tie game going into the second half. So I'm up by seven in the second half, and you guys know that I'm going to try and choose some clock and get through that, but also score a touchdown. It didn't really work out that way because Marcel Darius hit him on this wide open slant play, and then he whips on a hit stick tackle, takes it all the way down to the two yard line. But you know what? This guy's D line is really solid, and he's really good at defending those last couple of yards on the field. So I tried some different types of runs, but was not able to run it in. So I decided, you know what? Let me try something different. Let me go with a play action pass. Go with a play action pass. He bites really hard on it. And that gives Gates a couple steps on his defender to get the touchdown. So really lucky that he bit so hard on the play action. But nevertheless, this guy's defense is really solid for goal line stance. And I was pretty impressed with how well he defended the run in those five yard and under situations there by the goal line. So kick it off. And again, I'm thinking he's going to kneel it. He doesn't kneel it. And again, my kickoff return team uh, had some really good plays on this game and gets him down to his own 14. But look, Garrett Blunt, like, look at this run, man. This guy is pretty good. I mean, like, that was a really good run there. So I'm not going to let that happen again and uh, get a three-yard loss there. But it really doesn't help mitigate that 29-yard gain. Devin McCourty almost comes up with that interception that would have easily been nail in the coffin. Uh, but nevertheless, he keeps moving down the field, and this guy's got a really good pass offense here. Really scared for a moment when he threw that one to Vernon Davis, and Devin McCourney managed to break that one up right after it went in uh, Davis's hands. Marcel Darius there with a the sack. Again, another really big play by Marcel Darius. Um, shouldn't be surprised at this point. But that's just how Marcel Darius rolls, apparently. He's, he's just all kinds of big plays every game I play with him. So highly recommend that card again, guys, if you're looking for a defensive tackle. Now here, I was a little bit shocked. I thought he was going to go for a fourth down conversion. He ends up going for the field goal, and he missed it. I don't know what happened. I think he had enough distance on it. I think he just messed up the actual stick. Um, nevertheless, end up getting the ball on my own 43 and try to run it, get stuffed, try to run it with Tom Brady there on the pass where I didn't see anybody open, get stuffed again, and then I try to force a pass, guys, and you guys know how that's going to go. He gets another user pick. This guy's defense, like I said, is definitely on point. Don't let the 21 points that I scored on him fool you. So ends up getting the user pick, and I'm a little bit concerned here because it is a two-touchdown game, but, you know, there's still three minutes left, and three minutes is an eternity in football when you have a 14 point lead he tries to throw again deep to roddy white on brent grimes brent grimes comes up with another big pass breakup there and i'll be honest you know that brent grimes card a lot of people really uh criticize it a lot for its height but it's always come through pretty big for me and again i would recommend it to a lot of people now brent grimes has a ball that's just out of reach there ends up not being able to defend that one Going across the middle of the field with Brandon Marshall. McGarrett Plum with the awesome second effort there. Gets it down to my three-yard line. And as you guys can see, my D-line got no pressure on his quarterback there. And Roddy White ends up being completely open in the end zone 
for his second score of the game. So that makes it a seven point game with a minute 56 left. Now I was expecting an onside kick here and you'll notice that I waited and I was waiting to see if he was going to do an onside kick or a regular kickoff. He ends up going with the kickoff. Can't say I blame him. I would probably do the same thing in the same situation because I would be thinking if I can get a three and out and I can use my timeouts wisely, I'm going to probably have something around a minute 30 left in the game to try and get in the end zone. Now, scary moment here. Le'Veon Bell ends up fumbling it, and DJ Humphreys comes up with a really big fumble recovery. Le'Veon Bell then makes up for it, though, with this really big, what was that, like an 11-yard run there. And that puts me at third and three. And this was pretty much the nail in the coffin. Percy Harvin ends up getting the first down there on the cross route. And then, as you guys can see, I kneel out. The rest of the game, uh, use, utilize his timeouts, but he utilized them in a really odd fashion. You'll notice he took a, his last timeout with one second left. However, really great game by this opponent and uh, really challenged me and uh, didn't let that pick six at the end of the first half uh, get him down. I mean, he, he stuck with it all the way through. I was expecting him to quit a couple times, especially when I went up 21-7. So extremely great sportsmanship from this player to stick through the game. But anyways, get 1,400 coins for it and really happy to win this game. Puts me at 2-0 on the season in this particular head-to-head -head season for me. And uh, looks like it's a good, good start to the season. Might be able to make the playoffs this time, make a deep playoff run. Nevertheless, I'm going to end the video off here. So um, thanks for watching. And I'm going to put my social networking links on the screen like I always do. You can also find those in the description of this video and then also in the About section of my YouTube channel. And then in addition to that, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Every single one of those really helps us out here at PurpleSwordfish.com. And then finally, I want to thank all of my current subscribers. All you guys are awesome, and I really appreciate your support. So thank you for supporting the channel, and everybody else, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on the Purple Swordfish Show.